Wow. Okay. Lollers, welcome back to another beginner champion guide. Today we're going to be covering off Annie in season 13. She's predominantly a mid lane AP mage assassin type character that you can use to one shot your enemies. Uh, very easy to execute on. Uh, very beginner friendly. So if you want to try and jump into the mid lane and play an ability power mage that can one shot people, highly recommend Annie. In this guide, we're going to cover off everything you guys need to know to pick this champion up after watching this video uh, and start having some fun and winning games right away. We're going to cover off her runes, her items, her skill order and abilities, a very basic combo you can use to trade and one-shot people, and then we're going to finish off the video with a sample lane phase where we're going to package everything up and give you guys a chance to watch how to play Annie in the first few minutes of the game up to level 6 and how to hunt for that first kill so you can get off to a good start. So Annie's in a really strong spot right now in Season 13 as a champion. She's had a few good buffs come her way and is performing really, really good with a 51.64% win rate right now and is ranked as an S plus tier mid laner. For her runes, you're going to take these in every single game. Uh, pretty much only one setup here you're looking for, which is the Sorcery and Inspiration Tree. Main rune is going to be that Arcane Comet to help add some damage to your poke as you poke people out and look for those all-ins. And then you're going to follow that up with Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. Secondary tree here, you're going to do the Magical Footwear with the Cosmic Insight. And then in terms of the extra shards here, Double Adaptive Force with one Magic Resist. Summoner spells are always going to be flash and ignite. You're playing a champion that wants to try and kill people from very early on in the game and one-shot people. So you're going to always take that flash and then that extra damage from ignite is going to help secure some kills for you early on and help you snowball and become a very big threat as the mid-game approaches. Starting items for Annie is always going to be the Doran's Ring plus the two health potions. Doran's Ring just gives you everything you need as a mid lane AP mage, so you're going to take that in every single one of your games. And then in terms of the rush item, you're going to try and rush the Luden's Tempest. It gives you high burst damage and good against all in fragile type opponents, you know, squishier ADC, bot lane support mages, other mid lane mages, or assassins who have very small health bars. It just helps you delete those squishier targets with a one shot combo. Really, really easy. And then of course you're gonna get the sorcerer's shoes for the magic penetration and move speed second and try and round out your core with shadow flame. It just gives you more health, more ability power. Um, good core set of items here for Annie to start to one shot people and also also survive just a little bit to be able to walk away after you drop your combo so if you can get these three core items here by 20 minutes you're going to be in really good position to start to one shot people and be the most feared champion on the rift we're going to jump in uh, and, and talk about the abilities here in a second but just to cover off the skill priority before we go and chat about those you're going to want to try and make sure you max out your Q followed by your W, E, and then a point in R whenever you can. Q is kind of your bread and butter ability. Um, w is good area of effect damage, so we're going to max that out second. And then the Molten Shield is a little bit of a move speed and shield there that we can wait to add some more points in uh, in the last few slots there as the game comes to a close. Okay, so let's talk about Annie's abilities here and a very basic combo you guys can use to start to one-shot your enemies in lane. Uh, starting with her passive Pyromania, after using four abilities, Annie's next damaging ability stuns for 1.5 seconds and Annie begins the game and respawns with Pyromania available. So this was the buff that really turned Annie into a very powerful champion in Season 13. The fact that you can stun someone with a point-and-click ability in your kit or your area of effect ability in your kit makes it very powerful because it sets up not only your other teammates to help jump in and kill people, but it also uses um, CC to land your own full combo and one-shot people. So you'll know that you have this passive available with the little counter under your health and mana bar here. Right now it's at one, but you can see as we cast abilities, that fills up all the way to four. When you see the purple fourth slot there, that means your next damaging ability is going to stun its target. All right, so if we use a Q on this champion, it's gonna stun them. If we were to build this up again, and we'll just do it quickly here and use a W that would also stun them. Okay, so 
really really strong passive in terms of stunning people to allow you to follow up with more damage in your combo and again you start the game with this ready and every time you respawn you have that ready or every four ability casts you have that ready so if we were to use q in lane that's one stack w that's a second stack e that's a third stack another q that's fourth stack and now we're ready to stun the target next time we damage them with an ability it has to be an ability you can't damage them with an auto attack and stun them so it's going to have to be an ability okay so knowing that passive now let's get into the abilities so q disintegrate annie hurls a fireball dealing a bunch of magic damage if the target dies annie refunds the mana cost and reduces the cooldown by 50 percent so there's a lot in there but essentially you're launching a fireball it's a point and click ability so you can't miss it really really easy for beginners to land a bunch of damage just by hovering your mouse over the enemy champion and pressing q but like the ability said if the target dies it refunds the man in half the cooldown so you can use this as a beginner to help you uh, secure some last hits on minions in lane it's a really good tool for doing that but it also just helps you stack up that passive stun and have that stun available on a point and click ability uh, with your Q the next ability here, her W, Incinerate, uh, very basic. She just projects a wave of fire in front of her in a cone and it deals some magic damage. So uh, this is an area of effect ability, which means it can hit multiple targets, but because it's not a point and click, you can miss it. So if I were to W on this side, I, I might miss them, or if I'm too far away, I could miss it. So really important to make sure if you're gonna use this ability, uh, that enemy champion is within range and you're making sure that you hit them uh, with that skill shot. So a really easy way obviously to do that is to make sure you have your fourth um, stack ready so that your next damaging ability to stuns and then you'll hit them with a Q, stun them and then follow that up with a W and hit them while they're stunned so you can't miss that damage from the W. All right, and then the last basic ability here, Molten Shield. Annie grants herself or an ally champion a little bit of a magic shield uh, for three seconds and also gives a little bit of a boost in move speed. While the shield holds, if anyone damages that champion with the shield, they're going to take a little chunk of magic damage as well. Okay, so here you can see if I just press E on myself, I'm going to get that little bit of a magic shield, the move speed boost, and if someone was to hit me while that shield is active, they're going to take a little bit of magic damage in return, but I can also cast this shield on an ally champion and those same effects will happen for that champion. The really cool and important part of this ability is the fact that it allows you to get a little bit of move speed and get into range to land your Q and stun them right? Because this doesn't actually cause damage to a champion unless they hit you, really what you're doing with this is you're using it to get move speed and then run towards a champion, land your Q, stun them, and follow it up with your W to get a nice little trade-off. You can also use it defensively if you just want to land a Q and then run away from a champion who could be engaging on you or shield you while you're getting last hits on minions just to not take so much damage in mini trades. So a little bit of uh, playmaking ability there for you guys to figure out how you want to use, but the general use is move speed into a stun. Okay, and then the last ability here, the R, summon Tibbers. Annie summons her teddy bear Tibbers um, down onto the battlefield. Uh, if it drops onto someone, it's going to deal a bunch of magic damage, and then it's going to survive and, and live for 45 seconds as an additional unit for you that you can control, and it burns enemies around it uh, for an additional bit of magic damage per second okay tibbers has its own stats here you can see with some health and some armor and magic resist and attack damage um, and you can manually control it so if we were to drop this down it's going to attack whoever i last hit with a spell but you can also click r around the map or on different units to make tibbers focus that unit so if i wanted him to hit this champion i could click r on that champion if i wanted tibbers to switch over and start hitting the scuttle crab or another champion i just have to press r on that scuttle crab or champion now it does have a range if annie goes out outside of that range with that circle you can see tibbers is just going to instantly come back to you um, and then you can start to control him as usual again in that field of control so in terms of a one-shot combo with annie what we have to make sure we do is for beginners especially start your combo as normal with that e move speed into a stun with your q 
okay? You want to make sure you land a stun with your Q on your target before you drop Tibbers on them, because then Tibbers cannot miss. Technically, Tibbers is a skill shot. I could miss the champion when I drop him. So it's much easier to drop Tibbers and get that damage to go through on a stunned target. So your basic all-in combo with Annie would be to probably get around three or four stacks, right? Even if you are at four, that's fine. Use your E to get some move speed towards a champion, land your Q, press R, follow it up with W, and then just keep auto attacking them, okay? That's the basic all-in combo. Again, you wanna make sure you have your Q stun ready on them before you drop Tibbers on them. Or you could get you know, someone flashing out of your Tibbers drop even though you think you're gonna drop it right on them. It's just the most safe and secure way to drop Tibbers and guarantee the damage. If you know the enemy champion doesn't have flash or either immobile and they don't have any dashes, yes, you can open the combo with Tibbers and follow it up with a Q. Um, but again, there's more benefits to having the target stunned uh, with that Q guaranteed um, and just locking them down and dropping Tibbers right on their head. Now, Tibbers has a few other parts of him here in terms of being enraged. Being enraged means, enraged means Tibbers has a huge bonus in attack speed, 275%, and a bonus in move speed. Anytime he gets summoned, when Annie stuns a target, or if Annie dies, he's going to be in range. So again, the best way to land this combo and get your max damage is make sure you have your stun ready. Walk up, stun someone, drop Tibbers. He's going to drop in rage because the person was stunned and he was just spawned. And then if you stun somebody again after that, he's going to become enraged again and get more attack speed, you can see. Okay? So... Guys, super basic kit here with Annie. Very easy to land the damage as long as you're opening up with that stun combo with the Q into R. With all that said now, let's jump into the lane phase here and walk you guys through a basic sample of how you want to play the early part of the game with Annie. Okay, so we're in lane phase here. Minions have spawned. We're going to chat through how you want to open up the game and look for that first kill in the lane phase. Really cool that we start with that um, stun available right away. We've got a point in our queue. We're gonna right off the bat look for a quick little trade against whoever we're playing if they give it to us. The fact that we can deal damage and stun right at level one means we're probably gonna win any level one trade we take. So you're just gonna walk up to them, land that uh, Q, and then walk away. Should be some pretty good damage. Um, you can auto attack, of course, if they're ranged and they're gonna give you an auto attack. Annie's auto still hurt, and you can still Q without having the stun. Um, it's just a little bit more optimal to obviously hit people while you have the stun active on it. With the Arcane Comet and the short cooldown of the Q being only 4 seconds, you can kill someone honestly right at level 1. You can see here, even with just a flash and a few Qs, if they're not careful, they'll die. But um, it obviously might not happen that easily in your games. You're just going to look for that type of trade pattern early on in level 1. Now, if you do happen to get a kill, you're going to use your W on the wave and your Q on last hits to try and shove minion waves or help secure last hits and some gold. Or you can use the W to obviously damage champions within minion waves if you want to still hit them, but damage the wave. Now, Annie's attack range is a slightly longer than her Q, so you can poke people with autos outside of your Q range if that's easier. But now that we have level 3 and we have some move speed off of our E, we can always E forward, Q people, and then walk away. Really clean trade pattern, easy to execute again because we have move speed, a shield, and damage that could stun if we have four stacks. So even if we don't have four stacks, we can E forward, Q, auto, and walk away if we wanted to and block some damage. Now that we have four stacks though, we can get a stun off with our Q, W right away because they're gonna be stunned and it's gonna hit every time, and then follow up with more auto attacks or flashes into autos if we want to. And you can see there, even sometimes a flash Q is enough to kill people. So using your Q, you can help you shove waves here because again, it refunds its mana cost and halves the cooldown if you need to spam it on minions to shove. Really easy to do so, but you can also use your W to, to push in terms of area of effect damage on minions and monsters. A little bit slow on the auto attack, so something to learn as you play Annie. Just make sure you can start to effectively last hit minions with the auto attack animation speed and time that up right as you put more games into her. 
So we've already got a few kills here. We're going to build towards our Luden's Tempest. Ideal first back is Lost Chapter. We can't get it right now with the gold that we have. So we're going to get a Blasting Wand and a Sapphire Crystal. And then walking back to lane, you want to make sure you use your E for that slight move speed boost just to get back to lane a little bit faster to make sure you don't miss any potential last hits or experience from minions dying. So it's up again. I'm going to use it again to walk into lane here. And now we can focus and talk about a little bit more specifically on your kind of bread and butter trading pattern of having a few stacks ready and then making sure you time that up for your fourth stack to be on your queue to stun. So less experienced champions might see you at three stacks and think, hey, she's not going to stun me. She doesn't have four ready. That's when you want to try and use your E to get the fourth stack, run forward, stun them, and then disengage, especially if it's in a big minion wave like that. Okay. So here we're under tower, so we're just trying to make sure we farm Annie under tower. You can make sure you secure last hits with your W's or your Q's uh, pretty well. Auto attacks obviously still if necessary, but if people try and disrespect you like this and walk a little bit too close, you can always use that magic shield and W and Q damage to really finish people off. Again, we have Ignite available. You can see the kill threat that you have as Annie with the stuns and two damaging abilities and a move speed and a shield very early on even pre-level six so again this is why annie's so strong right now very easy to land her damage consistently it's very consistent damage point and click it hurts it stuns there's a lot of aspects to it so we'll shove this minion wave here and then we're going to talk about the all-in combo using tibbers and again it's the same combo that we've been using up to this point you're just Eam forward into the stun queue and then you drop tibbers on them while they're stunned i'm just going to recall here to make sure i have enough mana to do this combo and we don't run out of mana mid combo so we're going to just wait for a little bit of mana and health and then again e back to lane make sure we get back to lane faster so we didn't miss anything and then we're going to do our all-in combo on rise now which is you know you're at three or four stacks whatever it is Eam towards him queuing to stun him and then dropping tibbers on his head follow that up with the r so we're just weaving in tibbers after the stun that's all we're doing here okay so we're at two we got to make sure we get to to four pretty pretty fast here three or four and now we're just going to wait for our e com or our e to come off cooldown we have four stacks this is going to be an e into q into r so e for the speed to close the distance q r w and then you're just going to follow this up with more autos and q's and you should be able to if you've been playing the early game well and unless you're against their super tanky person you should be able to one shot a lot of mages or squishy ad style champions uh, at this point in the game even with a blasting wand so guys, that's going to do it for this Annie guide for beginners. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one.